by then you've already formulated in your yeah. mind right. what your interests are. But... Hi once again to all our friends, supporters, and stakeholders of iGreyhound. Here we are again, and I hope you have been making your Thursdays your regular habit. My name is Cecile Henove, and as always, this is a truly pleasant task for us as we look forward for every episode that is being offered to you, our dear televiewers. So this particular episode for tonight, friends, is no exception because it promises to be an interesting one. What with colleagues in the profession coming from diverse fields that we have invited especially for this episode for tonight so may i without much further ado introduce them to all our televiewers i don't know who to call first but perhaps i will say the individual immediately to my left so may i introduce her to all of you uh, she is uh, well she's a teacher she's a multifaceted uh, personality but i will allow her to uh, expound later on on what she does. But may I introduce to all our televiewers, Miss Marjorie Abina. Hi, Marge, and welcome to our show. Hi, Mom. Good evening, and it's so nice to be here. It's yes. really an honor. Yes, so thank you. Thank back. you very much. Yes, thank and then you. beside Marge here is actually her classmate, her friend uh, in a particular course here at Foundation University. And uh, this individual comes from Bindoy, Negros Oriental, and traveled uh, all the way from Bindoy just to be here on our show. May I introduce to all our televiewers, Jerome Resoor. Hi, Jerome. Hi, Mom Cecil. Thank you for having us and to our televiewers. Hello. Good evening. So I am Jerome Resor. I am originally from Amlan and I am assigned at Bindoy District 2. And for the information of everybody, I am a transgender, a proud transgender. Okay, yes. Okay, you had said it already, <laughs> Jerome. So it saves me from uh, introducing you that way. Thank you very much. But we are all beautiful individuals here, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, I understand that... Uh, you are both graduate students here at Foundation University. And I think this is one opportune time where you can tell our televiewers the significance of going into further studies, even if you may have already completed your respective degree programs. No? Uh, I'll start off with Ms. Marge first here. All right. Um, once again, good evening to our televiewers. And uh, I am very, to be honest with you, uh, when I went here, Kanina, I really told myself, oh, what am I going to say? But then right now I realized that, yes, I really love the question. I have realized that the reason why I am here is to relay this inspiration that we got and the reason why we enrolled into the graduate school is that, you know, even if you are a college graduate, if you have, um, have this degree already or you're holding a degree already, in the real world, it is not enough. The competition outside is really, really serious. You really have to, you know, you really have to take this uh, continuing professional education, not to compete because you don't want to be left behind, but to compete to help more people, you know, to in order to use yourself in whatever place you are useful by, and, you know, that feeling when, you know, wherever you go, you, you in inspire people. You get to educate other people, even in a very simple way. And in order for that to be possible, you also have to work hard on yourself. And one of the best ways is really to study and, you know, to master whatever you have studied. And, yeah. you know, get more opportunities to learn more. Yeah. Yeah. And then everything will follow. Everything will follow. March, right? Yes. yes and I understand and I'm happy to note that you are a broadcast communication yes, graduate of Foundation University. That's really nice. So welcome back to yes. the university and welcome back home yes okay yes, you know that's really that. very nicely said because anyone who may be in your position right now even with jerome here would need to advance professionally and of course personally no we need yes. that yeah i'll get back to you in a little while march yeah and then for jerome yes the the significance of going into further studies even if you're already well placed in government jerome yes um thank you for that question mom cecil just a quick um, so, Jorn, I finished my bachelor's degree yeah. here in Foundation University. Uh, also, so yeah, this that's really nice. This institution is really close yes, to my heart. Yes, yes, okay. okay. So, um, to answer your question, ma'am, teaching, in teaching as a teacher, the very empirical aspect that you should have is, I believe, 
competence. Mm -hmm. And to develop competence is also, it is very important that upskilling, reskilling, relearning, and unlearning should be there. Mm -hmm. There are already things that are no longer applicable or that are obsolete already. Mm -hmm. And there are also things that we need to learn. Okay, so mm -hmm. in order to apply these to our students, in order for us to become innovative teachers, mm -hmm. because we have what we call the conventional teaching mm -hmm. and the non-conventional teaching, and these are very applicable mm -hmm. to our learners nowadays. Okay. So it is very important that um, for personal and professional development. Was that, it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. It's okay, Ma. Was, was it um, a, a a big jump from? You're having been a graduate of a private school, no? Foundation University, and then you now you're teaching in a public school. Well, I had a really great um, adjustment mm -hmm. because, um, particularly when I was still teaching in Foundation Preparatory Academy, okay. oh, well, the instruction is very advanced. Mm -hmm. We get to use iPad yeah. for the instruction in teaching the lesson. It's paperless, mm -mm. it's more on technology. And when I went to public school, I really need to adjust yeah. because the situation is very mm -hmm. different yeah. from what I had experienced in the private school. Mm -hmm. So basically, I had to adjust with the instruction, the, the different activities that I need to give, and I need to go back to using paper mm -hmm. in okay. for the assessment and for giving the exams. Yeah. So, but as teacher, you have to be flexible yes. in, in adapting mm -hmm. and be flexible in adjusting yeah. with the learners. Okay. Would you say both for you, no, Miss Marge, and uh, for Jerome, your um, training here at Foundation University, did it really uh, bring out the best in you and did it help you in the endeavors that you are in now? First Marge and then uh, Jerome. As for me, uh, a lot of people would actually ask me, Ma, why did I change my profession? Mm -hmm. like, from from, from uh, being a broadcaster yes. to becoming a teacher. Yes, right. That was really not planned at mm -hmm. all. So it just happened. And then I have realized at first I was really hesitant to uh, to take up another course, and, you know, to uh, change my my career. Yeah, let me say that. Yeah, your to career change my path. Career. No? Yes, oh. since I have been working in the broadcasting industry yeah. for like Almost 12 years okay. now, I started the year yeah. 2011. And then when I decided to change my career, actually not really change, but when I decided to improve yeah. yes, myself yes. by taking this course, I realized that, okay, broadcasting is very helpful in this field. You know, because the main goal of broadcasting is to inform, to entertain, and to educate. And that is something that an educator is also doing. Yeah. So as for me, it was not that hard, that adjustment was not hard. It's just that it's more on papers when you are a teacher. It's okay. quite different with our field, yes. mom. Since if we have papers, it's more on script writing, yes, screen right. playing. Yes. Yeah. Or news writing. News no? writing, yes. yes. Script writing. Script yeah. writing. So when I started teaching, that's when I realized, am I really re ready uh -huh. for this? Okay. And then there were so many. I'm actually new to teaching. Uh -huh. um, I've been teaching for like one year and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, good thing my course is videography and photography. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I am also, uh, I, I had, I yeah. have an experience with that, with this course, right. broadcasting. But then, yeah, it's really nice to actually experience something that at the same time, you're improving yourself and you are also helping other people. Yeah. And with my case, um, I am, I've mentioned that Kalina, I am actually teaching scholars, mm -hmm. test the scholars mm -hmm. in one of the private mm -hmm. uh, college schools here is in Dumaguete City. And majority of them are not, are, or they don't have the access to the internet, mm -hmm. okay. they don't have a smartphone. Or technology. Technology, no? yes. okay. like uh, the equipment for photography, videography, they cannot mm -hmm. afford. So you need okay. to provide for them in order for your subject to be effective. Yeah. So I, I tried. I, I tried to apply whatever is yes. uh, accessible to mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. but then at the same time, I was too inspired to realize that 
okay, the decision was never wrong. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, yeah, so that's probably the reason why I, I still have this passion of continuing mm -hmm. this. And it's so nice. Yeah. It's so nice. You're I'm being in a radio station, still working, right, yes, Miss Marge? And also, you're being a graduate of broadcast communication. It has really served you in good stead, of course, no? Because that is what you had trained here for at the Foundation University. But I understand that you're also a licensed professional yes, teacher. So that's really very good. You had also expanded your horizon and not just limit yourself in the profession that you've been trained for. No? That's yes. really very good. So yeah, I'll get back to you in a little while. And then for uh, Jerome here, was it uh, the training that you got here? Did it serve you in good well, stead? Well, Mom Cecil, uh, Foundation University, specifically College yeah. of Education, had okay. really contributed a lot to where and what I am right now. Yes. Um, I could still remember the rigorous and tedious trainings mm -hmm. I had with my literature classes, yeah. the professional education classes, under, of course, the umbrella of Dean Roulette Cordevilla okay. before, yes, yes. with our teachers who are still teaching right yes, now, Mom yes. Kalisang, yeah, for example, here. Mom yeah. Gwendolyn, yes. they were really very amazing. Yeah. They very really push you towards your limit. And also, we were deployed to in-campus mm -hmm. and out-campus teaching. Um, so we really get to experience teaching in a private school and teaching in a public school. Right, so right. I really didn't have much difficulty in teaching in a public school okay. when I was deployed in the Department of Education yes. because of how I was trained mm -hmm. by this institution. Right. And uh, the, let's say, the attitudes, the skills that I got from these institutions were really applied mm -hmm. to where I am right now, yeah. Mom says. Yeah. Yes. Now, now that you have decided not to pursue graduate studies, and very soon, no, let's uh, cross our fingers. Very soon, uh, are you supposed to finish by this semester? No, not, not yet. Uh, Ah, your first semester, yeah, but uh, that would not be too early to talk about uh, when you're going to finish uh, the course. But for for in in particular, no, for from the learnings that you have had so far, especially on instructions in teaching, no, uh, are there certain strategies, perhaps, or maybe we can call them as approaches in the way you deal with your students that you may have modified based on what you may have learned in school or in the classroom? or perhaps from your experience also as college students, for Jerome as an education graduate, and then for Miss Marge as a broadcast communication uh, graduate also. Maybe Miss Marge first. Okay, uh, approach and teaching. Yeah. Uh, we, in my case, my students are, majority of my students are coming from the uh, far-flung areas okay. of Negros Oriental, so not everybody can, are good in English. Yeah, okay. It's so hard for me to relay or mm -hmm. to, to help them comprehend the instructions. So as much as possible, I need to use Bisaya, Cebuano. Yes, yeah. well, I really have to do that because they really cannot understand. Yeah. But uh, right now, we're, we're slowly learning. But then um, it's a little bit hard for me if I'm gonna apply my the approach of teaching I, I have learned during my college days with where I am teaching right yes, now, yes. it's really difficult to be honest okay. with you. So what I do is I make sure that we we do the repetition strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, and um, like for example, first session we we do the basic editing, for mm -hmm. example. The next session we do it again. Okay. So as much as possible, we do it three times a week. Mm. Yes, ma'am. So that's uh, that's what I do, and uh, we, when it comes to the equipment, they of course they're not familiar with the different functions of the camera. So what we do is we do hands-on like groupings. For mm -hmm. example, for the first session, I'll have like ten students because okay. actually I have a total of twenty-five students oh. each. Each for each section. class or for each session. Yes, okay. ma'am. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna divide them into two. In the first batch, they're gonna use the. Uh, we only have one camera, ma'am. Mm -hmm. okay. So we use the camera. We'll have a hands-on for the first for session. We'll do that, and then we are going to. I, I am going to ask them to memorize the various the, parts we, of the camera. Yes, ah, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yeah. because if not. They, if we will only rely on like the 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 terminologies mm -hmm. that I have given to them, mm -hmm. it won't be enough. Okay. Really, not enough. So it's really very important to repeat and repeat mm -hmm. in order for them to familiarize the equipment. Okay. So that for me is my way mm -hmm. of helping them learn yeah. as fast as possible. Yes. 
because that was that was also the kind of training I had with Sir Mark James Go. Yes. Okay. Uh, we do repetitions, and mm -hmm. then after, if like for example, uh, since it's not really impossible to have uh, at least one student from the group who is a little bit slow when mm -hmm. it comes to learning, mm -hmm. but what I do is after class, I will meet with that uh, student. Mm -hmm. And they will have a one-on-one -on -one session. Ah, okay, so that's really going out of your way already, yes, no, Miss Marge? Yes, yes okay. But the the students that you have, no, twenty-five students yes, uh, for every session. Yes, uh, Is this a a course that is leading to a degree program, or is it a test the course? Uh, it's something. That, uh, it's a degree okay. actually. So it's a three-year course. Uh -huh. It's uh, the name of the course is. Digital arts. Ah, okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Digital yes, yes. arts. So diploma in digital arts. So, diploma. So, diploma in digital arts. In digital yeah. arts. So three year. Uh, three year program. course. Yeah. Yes, three year course. And after that, after the three year course, you can take another year. Yes. That's one year okay. in order for that course to become a degree. A, a, something like a baccalaureate, a degree, baccalaureate degree or a bachelor's degree. Yes, ah, ma'am. Okay. Now I'm curious this time, no? Mm. Uh, how many of these students? opted to pursue a, a, a full degree? Uh, with like, do, do all of them uh, opt for a, a full degree or a baccalaureate degree? Unfortunately, okay. since there are some students who really cannot afford, okay. since the three-year uh, the three-year diploma, diploma mm. course, it, it has a free tuition yes, yes, within yes. three years. Mm. So for the last year, for the fourth year, they have to pay for the tuition fee. Okay. So, yeah, in order to get the, the yeah. baccalaureate degree. So, not everybody can af afford. Yes. And since it's a TESDA related mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. they can already apply after the three year yes. course. So, most of them would go into working yes, yes. instead of pursuing yeah. the last year of the. Uh, the course. Yes, but that's a very much in demand uh, mm -hmm. yes, uh, skill, no? That uh, yes, they would be able to learn uh, after three years. After three yes. years. Okay, so that's really good, no? So it's also very much related to what you had trained here for yes, at the uh, Foundation University. Yes, I'll get back to you, Miss March. And then for uh, Jerome, you're teaching uh, senior high school yes, this time, specifically Humes, yes. right? So and it, other strands uh, as well. And other strands yes. also. So you are uh, something like multidisciplinary. You you. You have but I only handle English subjects. Ah, okay. Specifically English yes. uh, courses. Now, um, how many years have you been with the government? Uh, um, three years in the government, I, two years in the private in the school. In the private, uh, yeah, private school. Now, uh, well, the senior high school program has uh, long been operational, yes. no? And then I think we now have had the second or third batches of graduates. It started, to, uh, the, to, um, the pioneering graduates were 2016. 2016, so we have had a good number already, no? Yes. Uh, and who have gone into the baccalaureate degree. Now, how many in your experience, and at least as far as you are concerned in your school, uh, Jerome, have gone into really the full four-year degree program? Like, for example, those of... Uh, your offerings that may allow them to pursue a, a baccalaureate degree? For humanities and social okay. sciences, Mom Cecil, there are students of us who enrolled here in this institution ah, for good. bachelor's degree. Okay. There were some who are taking education right now, yeah, criminology, yes. nursing. So basically, mm -hmm. um, for humanities and social sciences, courses like criminology, yeah. education. So mm -hmm. there are many. There are really many students or alumni from our school who really yeah. continued yes. or pursued their studies. Mm -mm. Yeah, and then uh, from your experience, just like Miss Marge here, no, the approaches that you have instituted yes, uh, among your says, students. Yeah. Yes, um, in the subject teaching instruction under the hands of Dr. Calcredo, mm -hmm. our teacher, mm -hmm. we discussed the conventional, yeah. the non-conventional teaching okay. methods, mm -hmm. and I realized that there is really no perfect approach. Mm -hmm. for a, a set or a kind of set of students because students are varied yeah. considering individual differences. So basically, as teachers, it's very important that you know and you assess what kind of students you have and what do they need. Mm -hmm. So in my, in, my, in my situation, I always encourage because I am teaching or handling English subjects, particularly oral communication, yeah. for example. Yes. So I always encourage students to use the English language. Mm -hmm that is expected of them. So basically, um, 
I understand that these students still have the hungover <laughs> from the junior high school. Yeah. Uh, and senior high school is like college set up yes, already. Yes. So basically what I always do is that every day I give spelling quiz mm -hmm. before I start the lesson. And then I will have um, the word of the day. I will call someone a word of the day, a quote of the day, mm -hmm. thought of the day, and a news of the day. Okay. So basically before they enter my class, they really need to prepare mm -hmm. this thing. So basically, mm -hmm. I believe that this um, strategy could really encourage um, could really push the students to really prepare mm -hmm. and to use English language yeah. during this time. Yeah. And I also assign someone, I also call random students to do the recap. Mm -hmm. uh, so we get to review what we discussed the other day. Mm -hmm. So I think that strategy alone is very effective in teaching and in instilling and encouraging the students to speak and to use the English language. And to know that uh, they have actually listened not yes. to the reports and also uh, learned yes, something Mom during Cecil, the day. Their yeah. feedbacks are That's very right. important. Yeah. They, it, it, those feedbacks are very impar are imperative. Mm -hmm. To know and to learn if these students have really full grasp to right, what you right. talked about. Yeah. And then Jerome, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's really very good, no? including those exercises yes. or activities to uh, encourage them to also read, no? read yes. and then expand their... Yes, uh, for subjects yeah. like reading and writing, reading. Mom Cecil, mm -hmm. we and really spelling, encourage yeah. students spelling. to yeah. read. We yes. assign them a book yes. and then every, every week, for example, we ask them for... Uh, book review or a chapter review yeah, for right, the chapter right. that they read for yeah. that entire week. I suppose these uh, senior high school students of yours may have also gone through the MTB uh, mother tongue based uh, yes, mother tongue education. based instruction. Did it not affect uh, their proficiency in the English language? I cannot say that it it, it affected uh -oh. their proficiency. Or, or maybe not affected or at all. I should say that some didn't really have the 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 good foundation mm -hmm. in terms of in learning the English yeah. language, okay? Mm -hmm. Because in public school, we handle like students like fifty to mm -hmm. sixty okay. to seventy in one, one class. In one one class. class. Yes, so you okay. really let's okay. not be hypocrite. You really cannot. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, like you later. cannot make sure that yes. everyone really Correct. is very good in terms yeah. of using the English language. Or maybe language. Work, work with them very closely, yes, no? one-on-one. On one. That uh -oh. would be impossible, perhaps, yeah. no, Jerome? Yeah, okay. Or perhaps just like Miss Marge here, go out of your way to like uh, tutor or maybe yes. uh, mentor a particular student who may not have uh, grasped the lesson during the day. Yeah. Yes, and, mom yeah. says it. And then very quickly, um, perhaps as far as your learnings are concerned, no? some of you may be starting, but of course, it's not too, as I mentioned, it's not too early to talk about when you're going to finish uh, the course in particular. But so far, no, uh, with your dealings also with your class, or perhaps with your professors here. It's like coming home, right, to yes. Foundation University. So, so far for Miss Marge, no, uh, in the one semester or at least, yeah, and then of course we're counting uh, some learnings or takeaways that you may have remembered so far. Okay, so I have stopped for, for so many years before I decided to study to go again. Back. Okay, yes, go back to well. school. Mm -hmm. So I really have to be honest with all the viewers watching mm -hmm. right now that I got so intimidated, <laughs> especially because majority of my classmates are working at the Department of Education. Oh, okay. They're really good public speakers. And yeah. with my practice for so mm -hmm. many years, we are not focusing more on English language. Ah, yes, yes, because yes. I work in a commercial radio, radio station. station yes. It's a ma massa station. Yes. Okay. So, so you speak the I vernacular? I speak Cebuano, oh, yes, Cibano. as much as possible. I really have to use the, uh, let's just say, the most simple terms okay. that uh, the listeners would understand. Yes, yes, yes. So oh, it that's was a big adjustment, huh? Very, mm. Up until now, I'm still adjusting, yeah, yeah, to be honest. Okay. And it was really hard for me, yeah. especially when I discovered that every class we will have a reporting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and when I in English, in, in English. English, yeah, okay. And, and when I heard my classmates, they are they are really good yeah. with the termino the terminology, mm -hmm. the vocabulary. <laughs> terms that they're using it's so out of my 
<laughs> but any, oh, yeah. Yeah. anyway, I think in a class, in any class for that matter, we help one another, right? Yes, yes. and I, I could really say that right now, my first time uh, of being in this course, I have learned a lot. Yeah, and definitely. I was able to adjust yeah. myself a little Correct. bit and I got so inspired to even yeah. learn more and go back yes. to practicing English more. Yes, right? Yes. Oh, why not? You're a graduate <laughs> yes, of foundation. Yeah, and then very quickly from Jerome, some takeaways, very quickly. Um, well, in this subject, this is very helpful actually because because teacher, there are we are teachers in this subject, and there are times that the, our teacher would ask us to do some demonstrations. It's a very good thing because we get to benchmark mm -hmm. some good practices from our classmates that we could apply to our learn cases. Learn from them. No? Yes, learn we could them, learn yeah. from them, and they could learn from us. So it's yes, a. Yes. And it's a Very mutual nice. relationship. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. So in the few minutes that we have left, may I allow you both no, to talk to our viewers. Perhaps you have a message for them. Talk to your students as well. No, yeah, Miss March right. first and then Jerome. Hello everyone, once again, good evening. Allow me to take this opportunity to, sh uh, to share a very short, uh, let's say, a very short experience I had with Mom Inove when I was still in college. That was year 2013. We were invited at your school where you were ah, working okay, with. Okay, really? Okay. Yes, yeah. and during that time, with that symposium, you were the host. Oh, okay. And yeah. I'm going to share this Look at very... that, I have even forgotten. Yes, yeah, well, okay, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, a lot of people would ask me how I manage my time. I have oh. been doing a lot of things. I am a politician, a radio yeah. practitioner. Look at that. Yes, ma'am. And I'm also a part time instructor and a marketing officer, full time marketing officer. And sometimes I do hosting gigs. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was all because of you, ma'am. I look up wow, to you. Wow, really? So much. <laughs> yes. Look at so, that. so, so when um, I attended that symposium during that day, you were the host. And then there's this line you said you shared too. Mm -hmm. To us, yeah, okay. and I quote: "Dreaming big is not something to be afraid of; it is something to be excited about." So that's probably the reason why I was able to do the things that I am doing right now. And I hope to my dear students, if you're watching right now, I hope you will never stop dreaming. Dream big. Let's be ambitious, yeah. of course, in a good way. <laughs> And always remember to do all of these, not just to benefit yourself, but also to have that goal of helping other people because the, the, real, the real definition of success is not about you being a graduate or you graduating in college or you being, or you having this big amount of salary. It's not, that's not the basis of success. The basis of success is when you're happy with whatever you are doing and when you are inspiring people. And well, the inspiration and the education will continue. So yeah, I hope you guys will have the same passion yes. and mission. Yeah, yes. thank you very much. So I was much. not uh, wrong when I said you're a multifaceted individual, Miss March. Can you <laughs> imagine you. that I've even forgotten uh, what uh, well, occasion was that? Oh, yes, yeah. well. But it's a small world. Well, good to see really? you here again, Miss March. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Truly, uh, it's uh, an appreciation coming from my part. And, uh, for you. Jerome here, yes, thank Jerome. You, to the viewers, um, thank you so much for watching, for gazing this event, and to our professor, Dr. Carl Credit, thank you for this opportunity. And to those who are still planning to study, come and study <laughs> here at Foundation University. You yes. will never fail because yes. you will succeed and the best thing I learned in this subject is basically that teaching there should be commitment competence and attitude they should come together so I am a, a living an example that you can be whatever you want, whoever you want, while doing what you love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My gosh, no, that was truly a nice, nice conversation. And having met you both, I would say that Foundation University is truly proud of your achievements. And of course, you'll have to, you'll be going far still, no, uh, in this particular endeavor. Thank you once again, Jerome and Miss Marge here. Okay. Yeah, we shall be right back, friends, for the second segment of tonight's episode. Learn, lead, inspire. Foundation University has provided 72 years of quality, wholesome education that prepares students for a world full of collaboration, innovation, and technological advancement. When the pandemic struck, I not only received the training I needed, I gained exceptional clinical experience firsthand. We transitioned smoothly 
to building our dreams from online design to building beautiful structures throughout Negros Oriental. And we are more than confident with going forward. No system is perfect. And that's where us, industrial engineers, come in. We feel more equipped and fueled than ever before to tackle whatever problems come our way. Since we began incorporating technology as an instructive tool, we were able to immediately adjust to the expanded hybrid learning program and remain at the forefront of education. For 73, become the extraordinary. We're putting the extra in everything that we do. From more internship opportunities to thrilling academic competitions, that will get you real world ready. We put the thought in learning so you can lead an inspiring life. One committed to excellence, integrity, and service so we can all flourish. F you at 73. Extraordinary me. Yes, and we're back once again on iGreyhound here on Channel 6 of Phil Products TV, Dumaguete. And also, we are being streamed live on the Facebook page of Foundation University. And yes, we are still talking to another batch of graduate students of Foundation University. And at the same time, they are also currently instructors or teachers here at Foundation University. So may I introduce them to all our televiewers. May I start off first with, uh, let me see the rose among the thorns, okay? Yes, may I introduce all our te televiewers, Mr. Christopher Bernard Benong. I see him always around, uh, specifically in the College of Arts and Sciences. Hi, Sir Chris, and a pleasant evening. Good evening, Mom. Hello, everyone. Yes, and then beside Sir Chris here is another faculty member of the College of Education of Foundation University in the person of Miss Jem Montesino. Hi, Mom Jem, and pleasant evening. Hello, Mom Cecil. Good evening. Good evening to our televiewers, students, and friends. Yes, uh, complete, no? Uh, very good, yes. And of course, beside Miss Jem here is her colleague in the College of Education in the person of Miss Reg Ramirez. Hi, Miss yes. Reg, pleasant evening. Pleasant evening also, ma'am, and also all the viewers out there. Good evening. Yes. Perhaps our televiewers would not uh, yet see uh, how tall or yeah or yeah how tall they are but when they stand up later on but I don't know if we will have an opportunity for you to all stand up but you know your your height is practically the same no and you have a good color coordination I think you may have prepared well also for our uh, segment but anyway yes you are all graduate students of Foundation University and it's interesting to note that although you have different uh, disciplines. You come from different disciplines. You are converged in one particular subject called, uh, or, 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 yeah, it's a course called Instructions no, in Teaching. And it's a good thing that all of you are also currently in the teaching profession. May I start off first with Sir Chris. You're, you, you are a graduate of chemistry, Sir Chris. Yes, no? Yes. So you're also teaching now at the yes, same time? Yes, I'm teaching chemistry in college. Yes, and you are a registered uh, Chemi chemical, chemical technician. technician. Exactly uh, what uh, do you do for um, that particular discipline, sir? In industry, ma'am, we are actually yeah. the partner of the registered chemist. Okay. We are the ones that analyze samples, analyzes um, uh, for industry, let's say, uh, if there are industry in food, in oil, uh, we are the ones that uh, no, take the samples and test it out for an chemical analysis. Okay. But in uh, here, uh, when it's in academy, we are actually the ones that uh, uh, that will be assigned in laboratories. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, for example, uh, we are the ones that will prepare the uh, needed reagent for the different uh, laboratory activities in chemistry. Yes, and you are doing that also yes, here at Foundation. I'm University. also the uh, the resident. Uh, and a lab science laboratory in charge here in Foundation University. Yes, very good. And at the same time, also an instructor. Yes, yes very nice. Yeah, thank you. I'll get back to you, Sir Chris. No? And then for Miss Jem here, specifically, what do you teach at the College of Education, Miss Jem? I'm currently teaching um, physical education. Ah, yes, yes. Okay, because that's your major. Yes. Uh, MAPE, no? music, exactly. art, uh, physical education, and health. Uh, yes. Do we include health? Yes, okay. And how long have you been teaching here at Foundation? 
It's almost a year and okay. a half. Yes. yes, and then at the same time, uh, being a graduate student also. Yes. Yes, okay. I'll get back to you in a little while, Miss Jem. And then for Miss Reg, uh, your field also is MAPE, right? Yes, ma yes we're okay. also the same with Mom Jem, yes. which is that's physical education. I'm also teaching major subjects yeah. in the College of Education. Yes, yes. And then, of course, uh, both uh, ladies are licensed uh, professional exactly. teachers. Yes, yes okay. Now, in your experience, because you are uh, here uh, in a private university, have there been instances when perhaps because of the experience that you have had, no? Uh, whether in a previous university or where you came from or where you graduated from and in your experience in the industry that's for Sir Christopher have there been instances when you probably found yourself no, uh, torn between making sure that your students would be able to grasp what the subject matter would be and at the same time also one thing no, for them to embrace other disciplines or other fields other than what you are teaching because uh, what i'm trying to point out here is there are individuals who would also like to diversify maybe they're not exactly into what you are teaching them perhaps they would also like to explore other disciplines maybe uh, miss miss reg first Okay, thank you for that question, yeah. ma'am. And um, this is actually my first time in mm -hmm. this um, teaching yeah. here in Foundation University. It's mm -hmm. my first teaching. Yes, career. okay. And as well as um, I, I have experienced during my practice teaching mm -hmm. years during my college um, education, um, I also have um, experienced. No, it's a face to face during that mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, as I have been here. Um, teaching here in foundation it actually they're um, online already so as I have ex um, an ex I don't have experience on yeah, yeah. online teaching so it was a very um, challenging part yes, of yes. part of me especially um, online which is um, as I can really imagine myself as a student that struggle, mm -hmm. that have experience, mm -hmm. as well as the um, internet. Yeah. Because as well as those p parents, I think some of the parents are happy mm -hmm. with the online um, online classes because of their students that they are still in their homes. But now that we are um, currently, we are now in a face to face. -to -face. Yeah. We're starting our face to face mm -hmm. class here mm -hmm. um, in our college of education. So I'm happy and also um, excited for the new challenge ahead as a teacher there. Yeah. So in other words, this is your first experience in teaching and uh, the pandemic uh, yes. set in no? for two and a half years. Uh, but when you uh, uh, when you were in college, when you were pursuing your uh, baccalaureate degree, of course, it was yet face to face, no? Yeah, so it must have been a big adjustment also on your part. Yeah, that's really interesting, Miss Reg. Yeah, and then for Miss Jem here. So, as for the question that you have yeah. a while ago, Ma'am yes. Cecile, um, my first field teaching experience is from one of the private schools here in Dumaguete City. Yeah. Okay. But the difference is um, that was a elementary level mm, okay. and then right now that I'm currently teaching here in Foundation University in the College of Education I'm dealing with college students yes, already yes, okay. so at first I was experienced struggled also uh, most especially in motivating students in the higher education okay. but um, I know that um, I have different students I also consider their um, learning differences so at uh, motivating higher education students, of course, um, as teacher, it should be um, dynamic when, it's com when it comes to the instructions mm -hmm. um, so that um, we can also, um, you know, have them motivated in learning and also um, diverse students, they have um, different, uh, you know, um, somewhat like they learn through listening yeah. or through writing, they have those kind of differences. Yeah, something like multiple intelligences, yes. no? Yeah. Exactly. Which you still. probably also got from your uh, elementary school students in your experience. Exactly, yes. yes. Okay, how many years have you already been teaching, Miss Jim? It's actually this three is, years, including uh, in this university. Uh, okay, yes. Was it uh, a big a, a leap 
uh, adjusting between a an elementary school and then now in college? Yes, the adjustments are there. Yes. And you know, Mam Cecile from teaching elementary, mm -hmm. going to college students, mm -hmm. I struggled at first, but then now I um, adjust mm -hmm. when it comes to the institution, dealing with students, and having online classes. Yes, and it probably was not also a big adjustment when the pandemic set in. No? Yes. Three years would be something like when the pandemic set in, two and a half years ago. Yes. Three years. Um, my experience in the private school before, uh -huh. in the elementary level, that was face-to-face -face ah, yes. event okay. of learning. Mm -hmm. Aside from here, when I started my teaching journey here in Foundation University, it started with online, online or virtual already. learning. Yes, right. Yeah. So my goodness, no, the experiences that we can tell one another really endless. Yeah. And then for Sir, thank you, Miss Jem. For Sir Chris here, the adjustment, if there is any. Um, for me, Mom. <clears throat> When I um, uh, when I teach here in Foundation University, most if not all of my students are not into chemistry inclined oh, courses. Yes, yes, since yes. we don't have BS chemistry here as in a major, Foundation. Yes. As a major. Yeah. So what happens is most of my students shout out to my students there, uh, <laughs> yeah. specifically our uh, uh, BS in nursing students, okay. um, education students, yes. uh, and also SIET students. So more. Uh, some of them really don't really have that enough background in chemistry. So, uh, what my approach do, uh, what I do is actually trying to uh, connect them in real lives, then apply chemistry to their real lives. Yeah. So, I try to let them know that chemistry, uh, even though sometimes it's more on scientific theory, scientific words, you can find it at your home, uh, in, 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 in your environment that some of our uh, phenomenon that happens in our lives, actually chemistry is there. Mm. So I try to adjust that. Sometimes nga, uh, I'm not speaking in English or mm. I'm not speaking okay. in scientific terms yeah. just to uh, empower them the lessons in chemistry that they can adapt or they can understand. Sometimes I'm talking about in layman's terms okay. just to <laughs> adjust. So what happens when the pandemic hits? I'm already here in mm -hmm. the Foundation University when that happens. Uh, that approach really needs to improve since my students are online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I did is um, I do laboratory activities that they can do at home. Like a simple thing like in biochemistry, my nursing students know this one. I let them find um, lessons and for example, protein denaturation in their kitchen itself. Mm. So what are the agents like cooking their um, sunny side up eggs mm -hmm. in the morning? So <laughs> those things actually let them understand better because what I found in my almost five years in teaching already mm -hmm. that uh, chemistry, if you really want the students to learn from any walk uh, in any walks of life since i'm not teaching major in chemistry or chemistry students is to try to look at their shoes or in their feet and let them uh, uh, you need to see them in their own places that uh, these people are not that inept in the lessons that i am teaching so what I did is, I'm the one that needs to adjust. I teach them on the ways they can understand. And for me, that's actually very empowering to the students when I hear them that, sir, it's happening in my, uh, in my house every day, but I didn't know that it's actually chemistry behind yeah, right. yeah. those phenomena. So, or, or, yeah, or perhaps let them understand it no, in simpler yes, terms in simpler and relate things. it to what they do every yes, day. Oh. Uh, there's actually one, uh, one uh, last or yesterday, I think, yeah. that my student asked me one question. Uh, she was actually my student in engineering okay. that I taught in and chemistry for engineering mm -hmm. course or subject. And she actually defended one principle in chemistry that her parents, or I think her relatives, explain it in their own terms, but in, uh, in sciences, it's not really that correct. So she asked me what to do, how to explain that to them, because she wants that uh, 
she's not the only one that is learning, but also her the parents, parents ah, and relatives. Okay. And it's uh, it's actually touched me because uh, the reason why I'm here as an instructor or the reason why I changed my career into teaching is because uh, one of it is to impart even in the smallest thing that I can impart chemistry and let them appreciate chemistry in their daily lives. Since we know that many of us, uh, when we talk about chemistry, it's a nightmare to us right. when we are yes. in a science. The sciences. Yes, oh, sciences. Oh, oh. Sometimes it's a nightmare to uh, us. Chemistry, physics, even yes, mathematics, no offense meant to our <laughs> friends. No, yes, right. So, uh, for me, uh, it's not right na uh, I know something and I cannot impart mm -hmm. even in the smallest thing yeah. I can do. So, that's the reason also why I am here as a teacher. Yeah. Perhaps your student also, Sir Chris, uh, was in a dilemma because he or she, uh, is he a he or a she? A she, ma'am. She would be correcting her uh, parents and uh, maybe they would not take it very kindly if she corrects them. But of course, it would be helpful if she says that her teacher uh, said that yes, it is going to be this way and that. Yeah, very nice. Very nice experience also. Yeah. So may I ask the ladies, no? Uh, first year in teaching, uh, uh, three years and counting, of course, and counting also, uh, Miss Reg, but certainly this is not uh, the end of it all. No, It's in fact uh, just the beginning of a career and also for Sir Chris, uh, a career path that you would really be pursuing, no? uh, not only today, but of course in the very near future. But uh, in your experience, especially so that here you are now, you're pursuing graduate studies and at the same time also teaching, is it difficult to combine both working and then pursuing graduate studies at the same time or is it a happy combination uh -uh. miss reg so as i experienced that yes. um, being a teacher and also schooling yes. um, it's a little challenging mm -hmm. especially now that we have a lot of students we have a lot of workload to do um, but still um, it's a challenge to really pursue because as a teacher you have to be flexible yeah because um, what we want to really improve our students as well, no? um, they also have those challenges. Mm -hmm. So as teachers, we have to be the model for mm -hmm. them. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Especially that uh, when you teach, of course, you have to submit grades. Yes. You'll have to hold. Uh, you'll have to hold <laughs> classes, of course. And then, as a graduate student, you also have requirements. Uh, yeah, that you need to fulfill. Yeah. And how about for Miss Jem here? As to enrolling graduate school, ma'am. Um, at first, I'm hesitant. Mm -hmm. It's probably because I have almost 500 students in this semester. Oh. And then. Total. That's total yes. already. Yes. That's and a lot, huh? Probably no because. Because I also have major subjects, okay. so I have students from major. So, and in enrolling graduate school, it's um, quite a bit um, hard decision for me. But um, I know for the fact that um, having graduate school, um, I think it would be um, a quite, or it would be um, some what like a another journey for myself yeah. and you know um, this will be this would help me mm. as a teacher this will um, mold me and of course I think that this is a better um, you know um, development mm -hmm. yeah and if you're in the academe certainly you have to pursue no graduate studies yeah sir Chris for me mom uh, it is really quite a challenge mm -hmm. since I am not uh, an edu uh, education, education graduate. Uh, graduate. I yeah. got my 18 units in mm. a private school here in okay. Negros. And after that, I asked myself if this is really my uh, path yeah. or this mm. is my career that I want to take. Mm. But when I see my students smiling when I am teaching, <laughs> that actually uh, empowers me to move forward. So when I enrolled in education, I'm uh, not like uh, the ladies. Mm -mm. I was always smiling because I did not understand some of the lessons <laughs> since I, okay. especially uh, here in our subject, that it's really new to me. It's mm -hmm. a new world, uh, a new place for me to join you. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that uh, I'm quite hesitant explaining myself, especially when I was asked by Dr. Credo that uh, how or how did how do I. Uh, what is my strategy? 
mm. when I do teaching or when I teach my students. So I told them that I don't know what kind of strategy I'm using since mm -hmm. I am, don't know what are these terminologies. Yeah. But I, uh, the thing that I told them is I do this type of teaching. I don't know what's the name of that. I apply this one. For especially for now, I'm applying uh, unconventional way of teaching. Mm -hmm. Like it's a research and a laboratory based mm -hmm. type of teaching in which I let my students do research do something that you want as long as chemistry is applied then show it to the class mm -hmm. and actually when they enlightened me what kind of teaching i am doing so i told myself oh i'm doing i'm, so I'm teaching you're, in, you're on the in right, line and in, yeah, in the, right, the track right track as yes. a teacher <laughs> yeah that's really interesting now so in other words even if you may not have had formal training in what you're doing because you're a chemist but uh, along the way or while you were on the job or while you are on the job then you were able to get the hang of it yeah that's yes, really very nice sir Chris yeah and then for the ladies here both of you are MAPE MAPE uh, majors right yes. yeah and it's really just like chemistry it's like hands-on uh, field or discipline uh, something like you need to have a lot of movements imagine music art PE and health no um in your experience, uh, wait, let me see, uh, pandemic already when yes, you came right. in, pandemic yes. as well, oh, so it was online, no? oh, oh. Uh, and you teach major subjects also. This is where I am very curious at, no? how did you adjust and what strategies, uh, Sir Chris was already mentioning some strategies or approaches uh, in teaching did you apply uh, for Miss Reg first? Okay, so as the pandemic started and online classes was a little difficult because that was my start mm -hmm. of yeah. teaching. First year in teaching. Yes, mm -hmm. first year in teaching. It was um, not easy. Um, as I have seen my co-teachers and asked questions for them and asked suggestions what I will um, instill in my classes, I have learned a lot, especially um, doing different types of um, things, strategies, being able to um, just like, for example, in my major subjects, so piano, I have um, mm, music, music, yeah, yes, music, music class. So, in, especially in online classes, my students don't have piano mm -hmm. in their um, keyboard in their yeah. home. So, what I did is that um, I have um, let them have a link. To, towards a online keyboard, okay. which is they're going to use that while we are discussing the notes, yeah, the keys. Reading notes, notes, yes. notes no? yeah. So for them to really be able to um, instill and be able to experience what type of note, what type of um, keys that they will um, touch for them to mm -hmm. really um, explore. Yeah. So okay, it's, um, it's not, um, let's say um, those terminologies are just um, whereas I think those students will not eventually know yes, now yes. Um, steal that in their mm -hmm. minds. Mm -hmm. So they have to actually do it yes. no? or, or read it and then apply it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So by that, they be able to experience as well as um, ex um, be able to learn that throughout their life. Yes. And also um, share that towards their parents mm -hmm. as well as the other um, siblings or other people that they have learned that through online classes. Yeah, and then hopefully now that uh, we're experiencing face-to-face -face already, yes. then they can definitely apply it face-to-face, uh, yes. -face, yeah. And then for Miss Jem, thank you, Miss Reg. So, Ma'am Cecile, in terms of strategies yeah. for an online class learning event, um, we know that physical education subject, it's quite for um, application of skills, yes, we know yes, that. Yes. And when it comes to application of skills, um, I usually have that um, experimental theory mm -hmm. when, wherein students will um, learning by doing, okay. of course. <laughs> so they have to dance, they yeah. have to do exercise. So um, when it comes to strategies, um, I usually let the student give, uh, I usually give time to them, an ample of time to, you know, do this particular assess, uh, no, activity. And then, of course, in that um, strategy, uh, I know for the fact that um, the students 
will um, will learn, of course. So learning by doing. Yes, learning by doing yes. certainly. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and it's difficult. No, it's not only music. In fact, no, but there's art. There is health uh, and and others. Yeah, for Sir Chris, very quickly, Sir Chris, how do you manage to, of course, like just ladies here, especially so that I don't think you're not being an education graduate is a deterrent. I don't want to look it at that way, and I don't think you also look at it that way, no, because you've been teaching already for a, a number of years. But in terms of adjusting, I think you may have mentioned it as well. Did your students also take it positively? Um. Uh. Y yeah. <laughs> so, um, because if I do the traditional way of teaching, right. it they will be bored. I tried yes, yes. it once. Uh -oh. that That's online, huh? That's yes, online. Uh, not online, mom. Um, in face to face. Face to face already. So, uh, they tend to get bored when mm -hmm. it's all in the books. Yes, yes. Even though in the same in online class, when the teacher is always talking right. and always talking yeah. uh, I can notice that they get bored when I call their names no one answers mm -hmm. and because of that I go okay let's change our way of doing this thing yeah, change the so, strategy change the strategy <laughs> so what I did okay go to your uh, kitchens go to your backyard uh, please uh, send a video send a picture so in this way I engage the student of learning what they can find on learning what yeah. is there that they can connect in Correct. chemistry yeah. especially even though it's online because my strategy is always be uh, going to research Mm -hmm. uh, even it's online and let them do researches yes. like oh. uh, looking in the different new journals that they are mm -hmm. uh, that chemistry is there especially when pandemic hits normally i'm teaching i teach um biochemistry on mm -hmm. that so i let and it's nursing students so i let them find new topics new discoveries in nursing or yeah. in medicine that chemistry is there or yeah. biochemistry right. is yeah. connected we were just talking to uh, two of your colleagues as well and uh, we had said i think that uh, chemistry is and other sciences for that matter is one particular area where you can really do a lot of researches yes, no? No. or experiments yes, and sir. discover new things yeah so in the few minutes that we have left i will allow all three of you to talk to your to our viewers perhaps talk to your students and tell them what your takeaways are in the subject that you are taking now here at foundation university first with miss reg Okay, so hi viewers, hi students, and of course to my co-teachers there. So what I have learned throughout teaching as a uh, first-timer teaching here in Foundation, it was a great challenge with the online, using Fuel, especially mm -hmm. it's my first time. Yeah. And of course, be able to experience those things really mold me as a teacher, as well as um, letting me experience and creating myself and also improving how my teaching in my students especially adding um, adding um, enjoyable activities as well so especially I have seen a lot of students um, while I'm in classes in our online classes which is um, they're enjoying they're happy and I'm also happy because while they're enjoying, they also um, learn yeah. through those in, um, those experience yeah, throughout that's my That's really classes. nice, yeah. Enjoying and then learning also at yes. the same time. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Reg, and then for Miss Jem. So, hello, viewers, friends, and students. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Ma'am Cecile for yeah. having us this evening. Thank you, Ma'am, and of course to Dr. Carl Credo. And yeah, thank you, sir, for giving us the opportunity to um, impart our knowledge to our viewers and also to um, Mom Cecile for yeah. our experiences. So um, my experience as a student here in graduate school, I think I should conclude that this is, um, uh, you know, this is a great opportunity for me to um, develop my profession. And for those students that is listening right now, don't stop learning dream high and 
um, go for your goals. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's really very nice. Yeah, for Sir Chris. Thank you, Thank you. Cecil, again, for inviting us here. And so also to Dr. Credo, to, uh, so, uh, that gives us a chance mm -hmm. to share our experiences. And also, I would like to use this opportunity to greet my wife. <laughs> Hello there. Yes. So, and also uh, to my students and to all that wants or there's something in them, mm -hmm. uh, the fire in them that wants to teach or wants to be an educator. Yeah. When you see your students smiling at you and there's mm -hmm. something happiness or there is happiness inside you that is burning at that time <laughs> you are in the right track yes. and also if you want to you can actually proceed and uh, foundation university has uh, graduate uh, uh, school and it has a graduate program for education so yes. <laughs> if you love teaching so pursue yeah. because uh, learning while teaching is actually very vital as an educator to impart more knowledge to our students because yes. they deserve it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. May your tribe increase, huh? Sir Chris, yeah, thank Miss so uh, Jen, and then Miss Reg. Thank, thank you, so you very much. much. Hope to see thank you, you uh, and uh, bump into yes. you on campus, yes. yes. So, yeah, with that, friends, we bring to a close another episode of I Greyhound. This was truly a very nice conversation with our colleagues in the university and also those who may plan to go into graduate studies in the university. Please do not forget to tune in for our uh, replays on Channel 6 of Phil Products TV Dumaguete every Friday and Saturday from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 3 in the afternoon. And yes, we are also being streamed live on the Facebook page of Foundation University. Thank you very much much once again to my stylist Miss Nicole Kalumpang for my beautiful outfits on the show as always. This has been Cecile Henove bidding everyone a pleasant evening. <music>